What's up, everybody? Evan here for Grips.com, continuing with Project Get Me Stacking. Today, we got a question coming all the way from America. Yeah, America. Yeah, you know the spot. Let's get right into it. Jeffrey, my man. This might be bad and badly worded question, but it's something that I've been thinking about and wondering a lot about especially as Black Friday gets further in the past. I was working hard and playing every day pre-Black Friday, but without the online game, it's obviously much more difficult to A, get the experience to get better, and B, keep the motivation to work and improve. I live pretty far from any brick and mortar room to boot. I don't want to fall behind when and if there is a chance to play online again, but I don't know what to do to avoid it. I figured the other players are getting better and I want to be able to compete without having to basically go back to the drawing board and relearn because my game has atrophied too much. Thanks for any advice and for all the videos, Jeffrey from Georgia. And uh, man, that US government, what a bunch of, you know, it's pretty, pretty uncool what they did to take online poker away from the Americans, um, but I know they had the reasons. They wanted to get their piece of the pie. Or maybe they were concerned that their players were losing too much money to the Europeans. So they wanted to shut it down so the Americans could have some time to train and work on their game and come back and, and then win all the monies. I don't know. I think there were some Americans who were doing really, really well, though, at the time. So, I mean, I don't really know. I don't know the whole motivation. My thinking was that they were, they were upset that Uncle Sam wasn't getting his piece. But can't be sure. Anyway, it's a great question, and uh, it's a fear shared by many, for sure. But uh, I can start by telling you some good news, and that's that you're probably worrying just a little bit more than you need to. First off, um, if you were dedicated enough to work on your game every day before Black Friday happened, then you probably have what it takes to be better than 95% of poker players out there who are going to be playing that online poker so when online poker comes back, if you can regain that work ethic or if you can maintain it during this like off season, you will see the results again. I, uh, I pretty much promise you. Anyway, let's take this to the presentation. And let's talk about how you can stay sharp without online poker. And I know it's, it's sad, it's tough, but uh, there's still a lot you can do and you might even be able to get better without online poker being there just because you're forced to work on some other things and look at some other stuff. So let's, let's talk about them. First thing is that being good at poker, it's not only about volume. It's not about how many hands you can put in. It's not about how many tables you can play. It's not about how many stats you have on your poker tracker. It's not about how good you are at math. <clears throat> it comes down to your thought process. How strong is your thought process? The big thing in poker is having a strong thought process and understanding how other people's thought process work, understanding how they think. Um, it's been said that putting in a ton of volume will probably make you great. But that's because eventually, after playing so many hands, you start to notice things. Eventually, you understand things. You think about the game properly. But it's not guaranteed. Many of the great players were not at any point 24 tabling online, and they didn't need to put in five zillion hands to develop a strong poker skill set. Think about uh, an Antonio S. Vandiari or Patrick Antonius. Yes, they've played a ton of hands, and Patrick has probably played more than a lot of people. He may not have been the best example, but you know they didn't necessarily play as many hands as the supernova elites out there. And you'd be hard pressed to say that these guys aren't top players. So as long as you're keeping your thought process strong and continuing to develop your brain, like think about those guys, they're smart guys. And on top of playing poker, they do other things that keep them physically and mentally sharp. So if you continue to, to develop your brain, you're going to be ahead of the curve and you're going to do fine. Uh, the good news is that playing poker is like riding a bicycle. You never really forget how to do it. Um, 
So all that stuff you learned pre-Black Friday, it's not gone. It's just going to take a couple of sessions to come back. You know, you're know, you going to have to shake the rust off. You're going to have to play a little bit to shake the rust off. But that's going to happen pretty fast. Now, talking about atrophy, you don't want to lose any of the results you've had. But you probably also want to further your abilities. So how do you go about doing that? Well, everything you need is available. That's the beauty of the age we live in. You just need to continue to develop your thought process since that's going to be the key to how successful you are in this game. Just because you can't put in sick volume online doesn't mean you can't take advantages, advantage of the resources out there. You can still, and you should still, put in time on the training sites. Go through forums. Talk to friends. Just be thinking about poker all the time. As long as you're thinking poker, you'll be developing your poker skill set. It's really that simple. And just because you can't play online doesn't mean that every single other resources you had before Black Friday, like they're still there. And in fact, they're better than they've ever been before. So you should really be in there making use of them and taking advantage of them because not doing that is what's going to have you fall behind. It's not that you can't practice. It's that you are choosing not to practice. Okay. Likewise, you can work on getting an, an edge that the math and volume obsessed players are missing out on. You can start developing a psychological edge, working on the mental side of your game. And for this, I will strongly recommend both of Jared Tendler's books. Uh, they're called The Mental Game of Poker and surprise, surprise, The Mental Game of Poker 2. <laughs> His writing is easy to digest and has lots of great advice. The areas that are sometimes overlooked in poker um, are psychology and logic. And um, if you guys aren't sure that these three are like the most important things, well, the dude who told me that he thought these three were the most important was Phil Galfond, and um, dude does pretty well, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, um, A lot of people in the online world just focus on the math, and while math is a great base for poker, it doesn't paint the entire picture, and people who are math obsessed can you know, lose out to the people who are really strong in their psychology and logic. Although, I mean... If you're like super, super, super strong in math and you are a complete fucking robot, then maybe the psychology guys can't really get an edge on you. But uh, it takes one sick human being to be that solid and that rigid and that focused and that strict routine. Yeah. So most likely working on the other two is going to give you an edge on the math only guys. <clears throat> so work on these other areas. There are plenty of ways you can do so. And most of them don't involve playing poker. So just think. Think about what other ways you can work on these areas. And that's going to be something I'd really appreciate hearing from you guys in the comments section because I only have a few ideas and I'm sure a lot of people have other ideas for how to work on these things. So please let me know your thoughts. Now, reality check. Okay, You're probably psyching yourself out a little bit because you need to recognize... <clears throat> Everyone in the USA is in the same boat. Nobody can play on Stars or Full Tilt unless they're relocating outside the country. And those probably aren't the guys you will be butting heads with when online poker comes back. Those are going to be the guys who are playing the absolute highest stakes available. So you probably won't be running into them, at least not initially, when online poker comes back. <clears throat> There's also a good chance that online poker will be state by state or set up such that players from the USA can only play with players from the USA. In which case, you won't be battling with any of the guys who have had online poker for the last two years, so you don't need to worry about how good those guys have gotten. But, even if it does open back up globally, catching back up to the curve really shouldn't be that hard if you're diligent during this off-season. Okay? Take advantage of it. Use this opportunity to focus on fixing the little things in your game. It's going to be the probably the only time in your poker career that you aren't exposed to constant variance and a likely focus on results. You should almost be thankful for this ability to have like 
a chance to do some very focused learning that will have huge rewards when things are back up and running. And finally, take advantage of what you have. I know sites like Lock and America's Card Room aren't as nice software-wise, action-wise, or tournament-guaranteed-wise as Stars in Full Tilt. But that doesn't mean they aren't good for practicing. Even if you can only play four or six tables, and even if the games are tough because not too many fish are depositing money onto these sites, doesn't mean they're not worth playing to stay sharp. In fact, if you're playing in tough games, that's actually going to force you to become better more quickly. So think, if you can compete with the, like, the people who are playing now because it's like only Rex, think how well you're going to do when all the advertising money comes in and like that second mini boom happens and a lot of people are depositing money online again. <laughs> you're probably going to be able to crush it. And if I read correctly where you're from, um, Georgia, if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't know how big America is, but you're pretty close to Florida, if I'm not mistaken. And there is way more money to be made there right now than on any of the poker sites available to you right now. Um, action is good there, and there's a lot of money getting passed back and forth by some poor players. So go out there and get yours. Um, this applies to anyone who lives near a casino. If you have developed some very strong poker skills, you may find that playing live allows you to not only play bigger limits, but it allows you to play with weaker players than you would find online, and is definitely worth trying a few times. It will take some time to transition from 6 max to 10 max, since most live games are played 10 handed, but it's really not that hard of an adjustment to make. And yes, I understand that you can't get the same kind of volume as you can online, but you get a much more focused, high intensity experience where you can get a lot more out of every hand you play and every other hand that gets played by opponents, both in terms of value that you can extract and in terms of things to think about and analyze. Okay. That wraps up the presentation and you guys are going to be stuck with me again. And um, the thing I, want, I really want to say is that any practice, any practice is good practice. So just keep on practicing and when online poker comes back to the States, you'll be one of the guys who's prepared and everyone else who shared your feelings about, you know, not being able to work on their game because online poker isn't around but didn't do anything about it. They'll be the ones building up your bankroll for you. You can just sit back, relax, and collect the monies because you are ready and they're not. They're just like, oh, when can we play again? When can we play again? Oh my God, we can play again? Let's throw some money online and start playing some fucking online poker. And you're going to be like, yeah, bring it on. Okay. Just because things aren't perfect doesn't mean you can't put in work to set yourself up for success. So take advantage of what you've got. It's a lot more than when I had when poker started. I mean, back then we didn't even have poker tracker. So you have the software, you have the best training sites in the world. There have now been hundreds of books written on poker, whereas back then all there was was super system. So, you know, just take advantage. You're like, it's, there's no better time to want to be good at poker because everything you could ever need is out there. You just have to go out there and get it and take advantage of it and use it, okay? Just don't be lazy. Use what you got. It's all there. Okay, and talking about not being lazy, guys, please, again, for comments, how to work on these things, how to work on your game when you aren't playing online poker, when you don't have online poker. What do you guys think is the best way to do that? Please let me know in the comments and let everyone know in the comments. The comments in all the other videos have been so helpful. I've seen you guys helping each other. People are getting better thanks to it. Results are happening. So continue to do that. You guys can get that awesome feeling of helping out your fellow poker player that I get from helping out you guys. And I can tell you guys, it's a great, great feeling. Okay? Now, if you have any questions for Project Get Me Stacking, please send them on over to Evan at grips.com with the subject line get me stacking hopefully I can answer your question and help you get stacking and if you're finding these videos useful beneficial and you want to be on the front lines every time a new video is reduced re reduced released 
please subscribe to the channel below and anytime I release a video it'll just be like pop grips has some new tips to help you make some more money and uh, yeah you'll be the first one getting them so that's gonna wrap it up for me I hope you found the video informative and that other good word that starts with an I that I can't think of right now. Oh wait, there it is. Insightful. Uh, this has been Evan for Grips.com saying uh, we definitely, we definitely need some more dragons out there. Uh, nah, I'm just kidding. Peace.